which are a great energy source. Fats burn nine kilocalories per gram. Protein and vegetables, only four. You get more bang for your buck burning fat, and you look better, you feel better. So carbohydrates raise insulin. They help raise serotonin in the brain. That's why we love them, right? Give me a sugar rush, because I'm going to get a little serotonin rush, too. Dietary fats, wonderful things when you're eating the right ones. Critical for brain function. What do we give for people that are losing their memory? How many people here are losing their memory? I'm raising my hand. And those of you who didn't raise your hand didn't remember to. <laughs> so brain function, fish oil, it's great. It's got DHA in it. The fat that all of us grew up with, it's in our brains. It doesn't function that well. You start taking fish oil, it's got DHA in it. It starts rebuilding the brain again. And in my office, we do a test it's called Headminder that will actually check how fast your brain is functioning, how fast the neurons actually speak to each other, how your memory and learning is, what your attention span is, things of that nature. And you would be shocked. I've had maybe one or two people that have taken that exam who came in my room and said, I love taking that exam. It's frustrating because we're lazy in our brains, too. As we get older, we get lazy. The hormones are dropping down. We don't have the energy. We're not eating correctly. We don't want to put out the same way we used to in every area. Just what I said, consume a small amount with each meal and snack. Slow down gastric emptying. That's what fat does. What does that mean, slow down gastric emptying? When you eat fats, like an avocado, it stays there for a long time. You're full for a long time. I'd never leave my office without having something like an avocado to get me home. I drive a half hour to get home. Why? I'll kill someone on the way home. I will stop at a grocery store and buy a Twinkie. I can't handle it. I need to be eating. So we have saturated fats. We've all heard of that, right? Butter, cheese, whole milk, fatty meats, oils such as coconut palm. Okay, I'm not saying not to eat these things, but they are saturated fats. You don't want too much. Hydrogenated, you know, the franken fats. Anyone heard the term before? Margarine, commercially fried foods, cookies, crackers, cakes. I'm not sure how my seven-year-old twins grow. <laughs> Because, you know, what are they attracted to? They want all the junk. And one of our daughters, Jordan, the first thing she says when we go, we're going out to eat, she goes, do they have desserts? Mm. You know, these kids want that rush. Monosaturated oils are pretty good. Olive oil, I always have some of that on salads. Macadamia nut oil. I actually love macadamia nut butter. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it. It is so good. And avocados. So fat cells release, release tumor necrosis factor. I've told you that raises inflammation. Interleukin-6 causes low-level inflammation throughout the body. It's released more from this kind of fat. We don't want this stuff on us at all. We want this thing down to nothing. And you can all do it if you want. It's easy. This kind of fat produces more disease than anything else going for us. Heart, heart disease is an inflammatory disease. There is a marker we get called uh, C high sensitivity or cardiac C-reactive protein. It's one of the blood tests we do. If it's high, we're going to load someone up with some fish oil, something of that nature, or even anti-inflammatory herbs to bring it down. In the worst cases, I'll actually use an antibiotic for people where it really is high and I can't get it down. Because there's some inflammation going on in the body, we've got to get rid of it, or there's the risk of heart disease. Now, a big part of our practice is removing risks for disease. Genetically, every single one of us in this room is predetermined to die a certain way, all right? When we do a complete panel of blood, we find out what most of these ways are. We don't find out everything because we don't know everything yet. But we find out what many of these things are, and we reduce the risk for disease. We take these risks away. That doesn't mean you're not going to have a heart attack, but the risk factor, the risk profile is way down to nothing. Glycemic index, I mentioned a little bit about that. It's a rating system. Measures how fast a certain amount of food upon eating goes into your blood. Here it says when it affects blood sugar, when 50 grams of whatever it is are consumed. The more refined a food is, the lower the fiber content is, and the higher the glycemic index. It's actually not the glycemic index as much as the glycemic load. 
So for instance, if you have to have some chocolate, you're better off having a nice steak beforehand or an avocado so that it's mixed up and it's not digested as quickly. Make sense? So I'm not giving you the go ahead. Sorry? Well, it depends how much sugar is in it. You know, you can go on, on the internet, we can give you a website that has every type of chocolate, it has non-milk chocolate, has non-sugar chocolate, non-caffeine chocolate, anything you want, it has that. And yeah, dark chocolate is supposedly less glycemic than, than the other. But it all, it's all depends on what product you're eating, because you can call it something and it can look totally different in terms of what it is. So this is about the glycemic load I just mentioned. So a carrot has a glycemic index of 131. That's huge. That's like drinking a beer. So how many people love carrot juice? I love it. I don't drink it, though, because I know what it does. I don't drink beer anymore, either. I love that, too. But it's the same. It's about 131 for beer. So when you're drinking carrot juice, why not just go have a beer and enjoy yourself more? <laughs> so this is cool. <clears throat> Animal studies. Are we animals? You bet. Now, my seven-year-old twins don't think so. No, we're humans. We're better than animals, but we're animals. We have the same process as they do. High fructose diets induce hypertension in animals. What does it do in us? Hypertension. Ever hear of metabolic syndrome? Insulin resistance, hypertension, they all go together. Fructose promotes atherosclerosis more than other carbohydrates. So we're talking about, everyone goes, I can't stop eating fruit. Fruit's healthy. I had a rabbi come into my office about 10 years ago, and he was about this big. Tall guy, but he was about this big. And um, I took his blood and I said, dude, you got diabetes. And he goes, really? How could I have diabetes? I just, I eat fruit all day. <laughs> and I said, well, you got problems. And I said, you got to quit eating all the, all the fruit. And he goes, I can't. That's what I eat. And I said, good luck. Don't come back. You know, he couldn't do it. That was his way at that time. I don't know where he's at right now. I haven't seen him in years. And that's a big issue. You know, the lifestyle change. What are you willing to do, even though you're smart about what you should do to make you healthier, but what are you willing to do? It's up to you. That can't be given to you. That's something from the inner parts that you decide on from time to time. And you might do this stuff for a while and not like it. You know, holidays. I always get people going, oh, it's the holidays. I can't do this now. Holidays are the very best time to do this because once you get through one holiday season and you do this, you'll be able to do it the rest of your life. Because when you have everyone shoving stuff in your face and making you feel bad because you're not one of the sheep and you surmount that, you'll know you can always do it. Fructose raises low-density lipoprotein. That's the bad cholesterol. And the very low density, bad cholesterol. Fructose glycosylates hemoglobin seven times faster than glucose. Well, that's kind of weird. You mean I should just eat a bowl of sugar instead of fruit? Maybe. If you're eating a whole fruit, you know, you're in pretty good shape as long as not a lot of it because you're getting a lot of enzymes that break everything down. You're getting a lot of fiber with it. Xylitol. You can buy a bottle of xylitol. It looks like sugar. It tastes like sugar. What's the glycemic index? Um, very, very little. Do people like to do it? No, I like to use sugar. I like to use organic sugar. Whatever. Uh, but this is something you can do. Um, you can't use an awful lot of it because you'll get bloating, which is a good thing because it'll stop you from eating a lot of it anyway. But you can use that if you're making a pie or something. Instead of throwing sugar in, you can use xylitol. And also, the, another thing about it is when you, eat, when you use xylitol, you actually eat less for some reason. It satiates people better. So xylitol promotes health, something you can consume every day. Ideal sweet compo uh, compound for those with intestinal yeast overgrowth because xylitol does not feed yeast as sugar does. We're all full of candida, unless you've just cleaned it out recently or on a program to starve it. So xylitol does not promote it. Sugar does. Thank you very much. God bless you all. It's going to be right here next week on the 10th. And